I'm here with Jacqueline Sullivan, who's brought these beautiful votive candles that look to me kind of like landscapes. Is that right? Yes, they are landscapes that light up from the inside. Super cool. So how do we get started? So I'm going to take out two sheets of this craft plastic. Okay. And this is larger than I want, but I start larger and then I trim it down. Why are you using plastic? Um, these are alcohol inks and mm -hmm. they stick nicely to slick surfaces. And are you putting glue or water or what's that? This is alcohol, which thins the um, alcohol inks. Okay. And it's kind of a wet and wet technique for the sky part of this. Oh, so if you are, were a watercolor artist, the idea of wet and wet might be something you're used right. to. See, now it spreads oh around. Gosh, you're moving it so fast. That's really cool. So precision is not necessary with this is no, what you're telling me. No, not at me. all. And I'm going to smear it up a little bit. I love the way you're holding your brush. Will you tell us a little bit about why you're holding it so far back? Um, so I don't get my fingers dirty, so <laughs> is that a good reason? <laughs> That's a very good reason. And I think it gives more energy for brush strokes, et cetera, so it's just a habit. Now I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna smear this. Oh, That's a technical term. Motion, I love it. Yeah, so you kind of get two for one here. Oh, and you even wiggled it. <gasps> Oh my gosh, look yeah. at those stripes. I'm gonna try it again, because those don't look much like clouds to me. So let's do it one more time. Oh. Okay, I can live with that one. I actually, now that you said that, I see the clouds, like right there in the void. Let's see if I can blow it around a little bit. Oh, cool. So, so you're just using like one of those cans that you use to clean your keyboard for that. Right, right. It's got enough air in it. Um, you gotta find they blow at different speeds. I like this one because I have a little bit more control over it. Cool. But you just have to test them until you figure it out. Um, I'm gonna put another layer on that to get some dark areas. Now, and this time I'm not gonna wait for anything to dry or? These dry really fast. Okay. So it's gonna be a little bit darker blue here. So this is more dry technique than mm -hmm. wet and wet? Yeah, it's still a little wet because the stuff is just a little bit wet underneath. And I don't like those little edges there, so I'm gonna take some of the alcohol that I've got here in a dropper bottle, and I'm just gonna put it there and kind of fix that. So even after it sort of dries, you still have the flexibility to re-wet it, basically? Exactly, exactly. If you make a mistake, you just clean it up with some 90% rubbing alcohol. There are no mistakes, just creative <laughs> opportunities, well, right? And you're proving correct. that. Correct. Uh, my favorite quote is, if you can't fix it, feature it. Oh, I love that. I'm going to steal that 100%. <laughs> Go for it. I stole it from somebody else, for sure. <laughs> It's interesting how close you keep the tip to the paper. Yeah, that gives me a little bit more control over where it's going when it's moving. And you can use the brush, and it will kind of level itself out when you use the brush, but I don't like too many brush strokes in it, just in case it doesn't even its way out. Although I'm it gonna... gets such a nice painterly look. Yeah, exactly. These things are great the way they travel. I want just a little bit of purple in our sky, so I'm just going to put a little bit right here. Oh, nice. I think adding unexpected color really makes such a big difference, actually, to making it look realistic, like green in a face or right. purple in a sky. So I'm going to spray this one because I can't do a wet on wet. Is that and alcohol again? It is alcohol in oh. the spray bottle. And you can see how it kind of made the, a little bit of a texture in my clouds, it too. It did. It beaded everything up. And it wet the cloud, it wet, wet the turquoise underneath. And so they're kind of mixing now on oh, the I paper. Oh, I see that. So you get that purple that's beautiful. Yeah. So cool. So there's our sky. And the next thing I'm going to do are mountains. And we're going to start them the same way. Put some rubbing alcohol down. So does it matter that you have some blue in your brush and stuff, or we don't care? We don't care. You know, there's a lot of blue and brown. And our eyes, when we're looking at a landscape, our eyes kind of visually uh, mix everything up anyway. I think that, you know, one of the things that's also true is that there is some color bleed from thing to thing, just visually sometimes. Exactly. And so exactly. it's normal. This is why natural elements, I think, are some of the easiest to paint and to work with because they're forgiving. Yes, yeah. This landscape is pretty simple, and the alcohol inks just make it sort of really dramatic. Um, you can oh, so see you're just... blowing, like, peak shapes by coming from two different directions. Correct, yes. Very, very cool. And if there's, if there's too much of a peak, I can go back and put a little alcohol on them and kind of soften them a little bit. 
I like how this technique is kind of a mixture of serendipity and accident, but also practice and skill. Like, it's that interesting combination of the two. Correct, yeah. You can't, you know, it's an abstract landscape, so that gives you some freedom to make it whatever you want it to be. And, um, you know, and the alcohol inks are really good for just plain old abstracts, too, because the color is so bright and they flow so well together. It's just amazing. I really would have thought this was watercolor if you hadn't said it was alcohol inks. And I have often found that watercolor, I get a little fussy personally, which I find difficult. So this seems like a great way to free myself up. Right, yes, it, it does. They are very related and you can get a really wispy look with these. It just, it, it's all about how it flows out of this uh, can here. Now, if you didn't have a can, could you just use like a straw and you blow can. through that? You can. I bought some bamboo straws, which were a little stiffer, mm -hmm. and um, I was using those for a while. Some people are using hair dryers, airbrushes, hair old, dryer. That's old interesting. CPAP machine. I don't feel like the hair dryer gives me quite enough control. Right, because a it. tiny tip on that. But if you're working on a big piece, I can see where it would work for you. Does the heat do anything to the alcohol inks? Um, it's gonna make them dry faster. And these okay. particular inks do dry faster. They've got a fair amount of shellac in them, which um, in some cases is an advantage. Um, it's nice when you're trying to build layers like this that they dry so quickly. This is for getting some darks in here. Cool, I like that you all you have to do to get the color variations, you don't even have to use a different color. You just use more. I know, it's great. It's sort of like painting with watered down paint. Absolutely. And, um, but it, it leaves this nice um, kind of edge to it. I love that texture. And so I'm gonna trim this down, um, so I'm not wor too worried about my edges. Um, I want to get a little bit more like actual shapes in here, so I'm okay. gonna take and take these little vines here. So you're just using a plastic stencil. I am, and I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol in this cosmetic wedge. And I'm gonna pick some of that color. So this is like the opposite of where we're used to using paint to apply color through the stencil. You're actually removing right. the color through the stencil. And see how it gives you that natural it does. sort of look. And if you get too much off, you can go back and put, a, put some back in here. And sometimes I go back with a second color so you get some color blending. Super cool. Um, but this is how it looks before you trim it. Okay, so you'd let that dry, obviously, I assume, before you trim it. Yeah, but it's pretty dry already. Okay. Um, it dr does dry shiny. Oh, they do. So everything I think is wet because it's mm -hmm. shiny is actually just it's dry. It's a little wet here where it's okay. thick. But I think along the edges it's going to be just fine. So, so we want to trim it down to 9 inches by 11 inches. And that's because you've measured your candle and you know that that's what's going to fit Correct. for your votive. So I am going to... Um, Trim it one inch off of each, well, for the one inch, half an inch off of each side. Okay. So oh, because you want your landscape centered. I was like, why aren't you just cutting the whole thing down? Right. But that's why it's because you want to get edges. a yeah, little I didn't off get, each side. I didn't get paint all the way to the edges, so um, this way. But it's nice if you know you're going to trim it down, then you don't have to worry about getting paint. It actually keeps your workspace a lot cleaner. Because yeah, the place that I always end up in trouble is because I want the paint to the edges, and then I end up with paint everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, this stuff cleans up really easy with the rubbing alcohol. Um, which is a plus. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because the rubbing alcohol dilutes it, if you get it onto your table or something, you can just use a little more rubbing alcohol to take it off. Correct. Very clever. So now so this now goes down to there. nine inches. And so and now you really have to decide if you're sacrificing sky yeah. or ground, you look right? For your, you look for your favorite part and don't trim that part off. Okay. So you're gonna trim it all down. And I know you have one that's already the right size, right? I do. So once I trim it down, to the nine by 11, mm -hmm. I put um, double face tape across okay. the top. About a half an inch, it's just the width of the tape. And I'm gonna fold that down. This gives some strength to the top. And you're gonna make sure to crease it really well with a bone folder yes. or something else like that. And peel it. This plastic is a little bit translucent, so at night you can see the little tea lights that I've got in there. All you would do is just pull the adhesive off, wrap it around that tea light, and you end up with these absolutely beautiful landscape candles. I think that would be really lovely for any kind of event.